I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have James Wo, the founder and chairman of ETC Labs and the Digital Finance Group. James, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Yeah, likewise. Thank you. So I'd like to start a little bit off about talking about ETC Labs and then the state of cryptocurrency right now. First of all, uh, why did you guys start ETC Labs and what is your goal for growing the community? Uh, yeah, so we started ETC Labs uh, like Q2 uh, last year, and we started uh, ETC Core kind of like a Q4 last year. The overall, it's like you know, we are both like uh, uh, running a core team and also the uh, the incubator. So our goal is really to you know kind of like to uh, enrich the whole ecosystem of of certain classic. So we are here to contribute to to try to ETC make ETC a better blockchain. So that is the overall the goal. The reason why we select, you know, ETC is basically two reasons. The first, uh, from the uh, technical reason, ETC is comparable with Ethereum. We think it's, you know, uh, definitely have very good knowledge. So we think this is the blockchain which is undervalued. Uh, the second is on the, you know, uh, on the market side and the pretty side. You know, ETC is ranked like a, around like a, a number seven or number eight, but it's ranked twenty is on the market cap and we're seeing that there's a huge gap of opportunity here so you want to contribute more to make it better that's great and there's a lot of underlying value in ethereum and ethereum classic and you know ethereum is known for having a huge developer base and a lot of development going towards the next protocol and ethereum classic has a lot of you know almost all that same foundation upon it can you give a glimpse of what does the ethereum classic developer community look like right now how many people are involved and are there a lot of people doing active development yeah sure uh etc actually have a lot of you know great developers uh, in our team we got like a 16 in-house developer and we work closely with with you know some like a famous like a a uh, company in, in this industry like Y Block and Chain Safe, they also developed the Office in 2.0. Uh, and also, we got a lot of great, you know, uh, contributor in from the community side. They want to, you know, contribute to the ETC protocol. So overall, the community, uh, the tech community in e ETC is pretty, you know, pretty big. And also, you know, since Ethereum is com comparable with Ethereum Classic, we also get a lot of support from the Ethereum community who's willing to, you know, uh, contribute to Ethereum Classic. So we have a lot of communication with each other. So overall, the tech community of ETC is pretty, pretty large. That's great. And I know that the developers are very focused on, you know, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, whether it is a bear market or a bull market. And as we've seen since the the tip in 2017, it's been quite a bear market for, for traders, uh, but the development seems to continue. And hopefully we are soon entering a new bull market. And I know you talked about this on Twitter recently, but what are your top two predictions for the next crypto bull market? Oh, I will, you know, for sure say it's, it will be a certain an initial classic. So uh, overall, we see, you know, Bitcoin for sure have a lot of value as, as to the asset. But you know, Ethereum and Ethereum class is kind of like a blockchain. You can you know put different application use case on top of it. So uh, in different kind of perspective, it have like a, a lot of value on, on that as well. But you have like a, some other blockchain you want to uh, make sure solve the kind of scalability of Ethereum, but you know use a centralized way. But that doesn't really make a lot of sense. So public blockchain should be decentralized, and Ethereum and Ethereum class is really. Are really you know decentralized blockchain and i have a very great ecosystem so we think you know uh, on the kind of the both of the chain have a very solid value uh that's that's for one reason and the second for the set you know second market have its own logic you have bitcoin price goes up a lot the first half of this year and but it's an etc didn't catch up yet so we think you know about the logic of the second market itself maybe you know next year we will have a big you know increase of price of Ethereum. That's, you know, the from the, the logic of the second market itself. So that's the second reason. Uh, for the third from the policy side, we got, you know, CFTC definitely, you know, committed to claim like your uh, Bitcoin as a commodities. But, you know, in, in the next year, but I'm not sure about the detail timetable, but next year, whatever, for sure, they will view Ethereum, uh, for sure, Ethereum Classic as a commodity. And then from, from that side, it's also pretty, you know, friendly to, to, toward these two cryptocurrency. 
That's great. And I love that you brought up that third point about um, having those traditional financial instruments to help bring more institutional investors into the market. And right now it seems like it's very focused on Bitcoin. You know, how much weight do you think institutional interest and new money from institutional investors coming into the crypto market uh, will affect the bull market, the, the next bull market that we see whenever it is? Yeah, sure. I think it will be I, I guess it will be the most important reason to be very honest. Uh, there's like a two ways for you to bring a, a, a crypto market into a bond market. The first is find a really killer app that use cases. It, it, it will be a kind of like decentralized like applications. You know, uh, it kind of like the ICO like two years ago. But how to find that apps, you know, that's just really a question. You need probably scalability. You need great like a solid foundation infrastructure to, to find an app. And then you need a use case which really makes sense in, in different kind of industry. For example, in the finance industry, you 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 you, you try like a different kind of like a uh, different DAX on the uh, on on blockchain. But really, you know, you need really scalability for this. So it's really very hard to find a use case. But if you find one, that will be the uh, the disruptive one. Everyone will use it. So, but it takes really a lot of time. The other way is like you know when p more people believe into the blockchain technology, blaming the public blockchain, they were the move, huge capital were moving to replace, uh, maybe because technology is good, maybe because policy is mature, they were moving to the industry. They will cause like a very, very direct also impact on the second market that the price will go up then bring back the full market. So I think the second reason is like, a, the first reason is probably, you know, we can bring a very long term and really, you know, kind of like a, a great bull market, but it really takes time. When it comes, it will be you know disruptive. But the second is like a, uh, it's like a more like a, a stable, but you know, but it, it comes I, I guess much quicker than the first one. But you know, uh, uh, it, it just you know uh, we need the capital moving to the place. And I think to be very honest, might be uh, uh, probably my prediction for the timetable could be probably second half of the next year will be the start of the bull market. Mm -hmm. That's great. And you mentioned, you know, having a killer dApp. And there are a lot of people building dApps on Ethereum Classic right now, and as well, more money coming into the space. And with Ethereum Classic Labs, you guys are actually actively investing in, in projects in the space. You, I saw that you guys invested in at least 20 different startups this year. That's great. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what was the investment thesis and what did you look for in these investment opportunities? Got it. So we are kind of like uh, more uh, focused on the kind of like infrastructure level basis. So it's very hard for us to, you know, pick the winners for now. So we decide not to. We want to do what we want to do here is like a, uh, build a solid, really foundation for this and make sure everyone can build use case and put it on top of it. For example, our, you know, portfolio company, including like you, you know, a very, you know, a, a tech related, you know, kind of like company like Eastern Node. Uh, like ChainSafe, they are really building the infrastructure of the protocol. So what we are going to do, we, we don't want to select winner. It's very hard to, you know, select a winner, right? There are probably like uh, more than like hundreds of, you know, companies which build use cases. We we decide probably uh, touch that part as less as possible, but, you know, try to build a solid infrastructure, then we are, we, we are you know, we are fine with finding the great use cases. So overall, what we are here is like, uh, uh, we, we, we think, you know, a, a solid foundation is, is a key to the success of the user case. If you build a solid foundation, whatever, you know, whatever developer, whatever project build on top of it, it will feel much easier to, to build a kind of application. You know, they are actually, you know, uh, going to build it. And, and, and I'm pretty sure some of them will be the, will be the kid up in the future. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that you mentioned that I've heard of a lot of other investment funds simply looking at um, not use cases, but infrastructure, you know, and is there a point that you see when, you know, there will be a saturation in investment in infrastructure and, uh, you know, dApps will be, everyone will be investing in, and creating dApps um, or is infrastructure sort of the hot thing right now to be investing in? I agree. So, you know, blockchain overall, uh, crypto is still very early stage. So build a solid infrastructure is really key here. Just like an internet business, if you take a look at internet business, you must have like an iOS, you know, Windows, those kind of things have been built. Then you can build like a WeChat, Facebook on top of it, right? So it's kind of uh, about a time of timetable. 
I just think there there won't be massive adoptions, you know, for crypto and blockchain at least for now. We are talking about like the ten years, twenty years. So it's very hard for you to be do kind of like application be be you know be successful without a solid foundation for now. Mm-hmm. So it's just a matter of time. So right now at this stage of the crypto, we think infrastructure is more important than the use cases. So what we are trying to do here is really, you know, the protocol level of business, make mm-hmm. sure it works, then, you know, people can do the application on top of it. Yeah. Now, for these investments that you guys have made and for crypto companies in general, how much weight do you think these companies rely on the industry being in a bull market? You know, if the bull market happens to take, you know, an extra year or it takes two years or way slower than expected, do you see that these companies uh, will not be able to survive, or is it because they're usually getting you know traditional fiat cash through their investments that it doesn't really affect them? Um, how much you know? How much does the bull and bear market play into startups? Uh, just clarification: you are talking the portfolio of DFG, not ETC Lab, right? Yep. Okay, got it. So we are, you know, uh, for us, we are, we manage like uh, $550 million, but, you know, overall, we only invest into 20 projects. A lot of things, uh, the, the holdings of our portfolios are other coins on the second market. So it will be, you know, the price is very important here for, for, for the kind of AUM we are managing. But I don't see, you know, Bitcoin is a we die because of the bear market. But just, you know, they, they, they are okay with it. But it's just about the, you know, the price, whether it decrease or increase. But anyway, we are buying and hold for, for, for long-term strategies. So we are okay with that. Uh, for the companies we have been around on the premium market, it's also very latest company. Company like uh, uh, Ledger X, Brave, Block, you know, um, these kind of company, they have, you know, a, a lot of cash on the balance sheet. They raised, you know, a lot of money on there, you know, two years ago. So I think, you know, they are okay to survive the crypto winners. Um, but, you know, but it, for sure, I mean, the price inference, um, they, if they hold Bitcoin and Ether, they will have less money to uh, to develop uh, the, the platform. But overall, I think it's just about whether the founder of the company can, you know, choose the right strategy about the crypto window. You should have less people. You should, you know, control the cost. You should make sure you survive, but, you know, without, you know, uh, you know, kind of like a, a stop there, you know, developing the, your platform, right? Mm-hmm. So that is the whole logic. But, you know, overall, we care about latency company. We care about like more mature business. We care about the business, you know, have the verified business model. So overall, they are okay to survive the crypto winters. But overall, it's, it's so bad. I'm pretty sure 90% or probably 80% of company will kind of face cash flow poverty in such kind of bear market. But mm-hmm. it's actually, you know, a, it's actually a, a good thing when, when you have, you know, a good technology, you know, great like a cash support, uh, great teams, you know, great business model, that means you can survive. That actually a good thing for, for the uh, industry to become mature in the future. You don't need such kind of like a, uh, that kind of like a, a lot of company in the industry, you just need a good business, right? So actually, I, I, I don't view this as an active thing, but it's really a, a thing you can, cannot avoid, but actually a good thing will benefit the industry in the long term. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, raising the cash and having a nice cash on your balance sheet and managing your expenses is one thing, but having an extended bear market where your cash flow and your actual business requires more adoption of the blockchain industry. Some of these companies are building a product that maybe it's too technical or maybe not enough people are using it because the you know the crypto industry hasn't gotten big enough yet. Do you foresee that as a problem? Maybe some of these companies are a little bit too early? Yeah, I, I do. You know, there are a lot of like a, a kind of companies which have don't have verified business model. They won't put everything into um, into the blockchain. That's you know that's not going to work. I think you know blockchain itself is really you know the doesn't the necessary to make sense for every industry. For set like a, I can divide it into two. For centralized business model, it's more like a good bridge for crypto and you know uh, blo- uh, for fiat. If you have an exchange, that's a bridge, right? If you have like a, a OTC market, like a future exchange, that's also kind of like a bridge. And also, you can provide you know service to the crypto market, like what well, like a borrow and lending business do. It's kind of like also provide service for uh, crypto. It's overall like you provide like a central service. It's kind of like a build a bridge between fiat and cryptocurrency. That's the business model works here. For others, like uh, for a decentralized application, that doesn't make sense for most of the industry or most of the use cases. You have very 
uh, verify centralized use cases which have been really, which, which is really efficient here. And you don't need to, you know, uh, put everything on the blockchain. Uh, blockchain is a very, you know, a kind of like a, 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 a like a distributed ledger which can store like a, a very, you know, a, a high value information. So you really need to find, you know, great use cases which is not suitable to build on top of, as uh, uh, build on the in the centralized way, but build on a decentralized way. There are not a lot of model here. So, uh, so what we can see that a lot of uh, decentralized application will fail either because the time is not there yet. Or because the business model itself is not, you know, really work here. So overall, we 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 are pretty, you know, uh, the market don't need such kind of like models. Uh, so overall, for us, we we really careful about select the company we want to invest. Either you have great, you know, business model in the centralized way, or you make something really works in the decentralized ways in 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 long run. That's great. And is ETC Labs looking for strategic partners, more team members, or just more projects to invest in right now? And how can they reach out and learn more? Yeah, sure. We definitely, we are looking for investing to 20 to 25 projects each year. We just opened a round of like a coherent three. We we're successful doing the first two coherent. So we welcome for different companies to apply our, our website to, you know, uh, to, to the new coherent. Uh, typically, we receive, you know, uh, I guess last round, we received like a 400 applications. Then we select a little bit less than, you know, nine, I see nine or 10 companies to invest. So we are pretty selective about the company we we, 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 we invest. But overall, we welcome more companies to apply uh, the cooking industry. And then we can, you know, take a look, communicate and see whether we can you know, cooperate. Great. Well, I'll leave those links in the description box below. That's all the time that we have for this interview, but I thank you for your time, James. It's been a pleasure, and uh, let's follow up in the near future. Thank you. Thank you very much.